Hello, my name is Andrzej Krzywda and today I would like to talk to you about domain-driven design and how learning about the domain can improve your code base, hopefully. And I will do it on a very trivial example. So the whole thing here is very artificial and overcomplicated just to show some concepts. What we do as part of our Junior Redis developer class, we recommend people to do the exorcism exercises. And one of the exercises is uh, the Hamming example. So if we go to languages, we choose Ruby because that's what we teach. And here we have available exercises and there is Hamming. The Hamming example has a nice explanation written in a very like domain expert language. So it's a nice simulation of what is what kind of specification you could get from a domain expert or from your customer. So if it, it, I can assume that this is something I could get as the beginning, as the first iteration from, from my customer and I could be asked to implement this uh, Hamming difference. Hamming difference is a very simple thing. You get two string and you find the number of places where they differ at certain characters. That's basically it. And the whole thing here is about DNA, so it's about comparing DNA strands. I know nothing about DNA, to be honest. But if someone asks me to implement this, then it's quite trivial. Uh, in fact, um, if you would go to the Hamming Distance uh, Wikipedia page, you could see what it's all about, and you could see that Ruby implementation is actually uh, two lines of code. And th those two lines of code solve the exercise. That's enough. Nothing to, to worry about. Uh, if you know a little bit about the Ruby standard library, you know that there is a zip function and if you know it, then the first thing that comes to my to your mind as a developer is I will use the zip function and because that's exactly it, it will compare two arrays, arrays and that, that will solve the problem. Uh, that's probably a good idea. In fact, even Java now has the functional Java library which contains uh, several functional like uh, functions uh, so like uh, exists it's actually with a quite nice API so it's it's portable I, I find it important to have solutions portable between languages so even if I'm doing Ruby I don't want to over uh, overuse the Ruby features I want to be able to to, to have a, a very generic solutions that would be that looks very similar in Python Ruby C sharp or Java all right. Uh, then I was thinking, okay, but you know this this three line of code, two line of code, it's a bit cryptic. Doesn't really say much about the domain. So how can I make it more interesting? And I started implementing it with. Uh, let's start like this. And just as, as an ex example, those are the tests that actually um, they they care about those things working so basically we always re rely that return an integer and that's the public API that's the only public method that does the facade and below the facade I can do whatever I want and the readme file consists of the thing that I showed before so I started working on this a bit more complicated implementation but my goal was to use more objects and to show more of those abstract types here uh, like strand this is a base this is the abstraction to wrap the DNA, parts of the DNA. But strand actually consists of nucleotide. That's the that's the one character thing. And the nucleotide is contains the base. So base is actually the, the letter. We, I could go even further here because base is not really the character. Base is one of I think four uh, four characters. So I don't really have the validation here because it wasn't required. What I have here is the implementation of the strand class, the point mutation class, just a wrapper, just so that it's not empty. And then the algorithm is not using zip, just to make it more clear what's going on, but uh, it's also less readable than zip probably. So I'm just iterating over the nucleotides of one strand, and I, I check if the base of one nucleotide is the same as the second one. If not, this means it's a point mutation, because I learned in the readme that this is called a point mutation. I still didn't like the solution. Uh, some problems are the strand is actually 
Uh, this is like more of, more of a data structure uh, and it exposes public attributes. The same with nucleotide. I don't like when, when my ob domain objects expose uh, public attributes. There's something wrong with the design usually. So, but I, I have this nice Hamming distance class which is which wraps the algorithm for calculating all the stuff. And I'm actually uh, building all the objects as soon as I can and I'm passing all those nice little objects to the Hamming distance algorithm. So that's that's more or less okay. But then I was thinking, okay, I don't like this design, so I'm probably missing something here. And I, I decided, okay, if I'm missing something, I probably don't know something about the domain. How can I learn about the domain? I started rereading this again and again, and then I thought, okay, I, I have representation for most of the mm, subjects here. Not all, but many of them, and that's cool. But I really don't don't know much about the DNA. I probably do I need to? Do I need to be a DNA expert? So I don't need to be a DNA ex expert, but it's good to understand some basics. So I went to Wikipedia and started learning about DNA, what it's all about. I learned actually that there is an idea of a DNA computer, I didn't know it. In fact, the DNA computer can play a tic-tac-toe game against a human player. And it's a real, well, it's not a real computer in the meaning that we know it. So that's something I learned. And then I went and read about having distance and then I realized something very important here uh, DNA has nothing to do with having distance having distance is a totally separate concept it's sometimes it's used if you google for DNA and having distance you will find some example about it but th th this having distance thing is a very generic stuff you can use it for whatever you want even if those in those examples you have like names being compared or some binary things being compared or just some numbers being compared. So this is a generic thing. It, it's not, so having distance is not part of the DNA domain. And I didn't implement it uh, yet, but I want just to show you some one idea. The thing is that I want to keep this as a public method, but I want to change the implementation. I want to have two bounded contexts, as we would say it in, as we would call it in domain driven design. Having distance is a generic bounded context that would be able to quickly calculate uh, the difference between two strings even if they are huge so let's let's imagine this is run and it may be actually a wrapper and it calls the API for running it on multiple machines because this is easily it can be easily calculated concurrently so that's and in this module we never use the concept of DNA this is a generic thing you can pass just two strings and that's all and it returns um, the count or the number of differences. Also, the problem with uh, one responsibility is that we need to raise an argument error if the length is different. And this is part of the Hamming distance because Ham you can't calculate Hamming distance really in a proper way when the length is different. But it's not part of the DNA. So in the DNA, we could store, let's, let's imagine we, we, that the next requirements here are to store the, uh, are to store the uh, DNA strands somewhere in our database, show them, be able to compare one or two or three of them. So the requirements are getting bigger and bigger. So we are building something, a uh, proper application here. So the DNA actually doesn't have this required, the, the module, the bounded context called DNA, it doesn't have to have this requirement of, uh, of length being exactly the same. So my idea is that I would stay with the public API uh, I would initialize this DNA objects, but they would become like more like this. And once I have those objects ready, they could take care actually if this is a proper DNA strand, so it could check if the characters are correct. And then once I have them, I can you know, serialize those to, those strands to strings, pass those two strings to to some kind of public method here or some kind of public service in there. And it will return the, the, it would raise an error if they are different in the length. So that's the responsibility of here. I would wrap this error and return my own argument error. And if it's correct, uh, then I just return the number um, to, as a result of the compute method here. So I would have two bounded contexts here. And the Hamming distance would be a very reusable and generic thing. It might be a microservice, it doesn't have to. Bounded contexts are good candidates for, for, for microservices, while the DNA would just have all the knowledge about DNA that I can get from the domain expert or that I can learn from 
uh, from you know online documents like like this. So just this is just an example how you can actually do some d basic domain modeling and domain crunching techniques to separate your modules in your application. So if I didn't go to and learn about DNA and having distance, I wouldn't really know that those are two different worlds. In fact, when I started learning about it, I assumed that this part of the DNA world, and it's not really. So that's it. I hope it was useful for you. Thank you.